Welcome to a Kings of War battle report. This is between Forces of the Abyss and Goblins. 2000 points, Clash of Kings 19, second edition. Stay tuned. I am a casually competitive gamer, and I make concise battle reports that focus on tactical takeaways to improve our game. Welcome to Newbie Dice. Okay, so this is the third game of my league in a Call to Arms 2 organized by Adam Padley. If you have not watched uh, game 1, you can watch it. I'll link it at the top right hand corner right now. And I didn't manage to capture game 2, so this will be game 3. I'm on table 6, so I got tie on my game 1, so I'm around table 11 or 12. So after I won my second game, so now I'm at table 6. And I'm fighting against the organizer himself, Adam Padley. The first game I used Basilia, so I was experimenting with an uh, army that has more flyers and more options of flyers so I went with forces of the abyss so my list I have uh, two troops of gargoyles a horde of lava and I really like them to chaff things up and be an anvil basically so low abyssal horde with uh, two ender weapons then uh, tortured souls I have three flavors of tortured souls I have a regiment a horde with a five point item that I have points left over for and I actually have the special character unit called the Twisted Victims. So what's the difference between the Twisted Victims is they have basically um, they lost they lost Shambling but they also lost one Thunderous Charge. So this allows me to position 20 inch forward aggressively um, but I lose one Thunderous but I guess if I get a flank out of it is worthwhile and sometimes I will charge into terrain and I will lose Thunderous anyway if I had it. So that's why I brought the Twisted Victims. Okay, I also brought uh, the Well of Souls, Archfiend of the Abyss with uh, Lightning Bolt and Wings, Basusu the Vow, and a Warlock. A Warlock comes with no spells, I equipped him with Blizzard. So, things to take note, quite a lot of my army can fly. The only thing that doesn't fly is the two Hordes of Infantry and the Warlock. Everything else flies. Okay, in terms of shooting, I only have two options for shooting, and that is the Lightning Bolt. From the archfiend of the beast and blizzard so hopefully with this two i'm able to take out chaff units and then blizzard just remain a threat throughout the game for anything that's uh, any low nerf things that's flying around or moving around or anything that's close to death that's trying to run away hopefully i can get a blizzard in okay so next let's talk about adam's list he has a lot of shooting it's basically a shooting army so 2 Hots of Rebel, 2 Hots of Spitters, 5 Regiments of Sniffs, right? 2 Trombones, 3 Rock Throwers, and 4 Characters, 2 Flaggets, both of them have uh, ranged items. One is a Holy Rain Grenade, the other one is a Diadem of Dragon Kind for Breath, and 2 Wizards. The 2 Wizards have uh, one each has Blood Boil, and the other one has Alchemist Curse. Now all 4 of the characters are mounted. Yep. So let's move on. So this is the deployment and the scenario is dominate. So you can see that small little tombstone in the center, that's the center point. Okay. So from the picture, you can't really tell which one is the spitters and which one is the rebel. So I'll just identify them right here. The one that's more ogled, uh, that's a bit more orderly arranged is the rebel. Yeah. And then the one that's a little bit more uh, disordered looking is the spitters. Okay, then you have the trombones and the big rock throwers. Now the fl the flaggets are the one that's a bit darker in brown. So there's one on each side to inspire, while the wizard is all on this side. And yep, so my units, I think uh, it's quite obvious what each of them are. This is a warlock behind the hill on the center. To my right, that's a well of souls. And the flying stuff with some cloaks, they are the twisted victims. Okay, the dark ones are the gargoyles. So deployment, I place my non-flying stuff in the middle, especially the two hots because dominate unit strength in the middle, right? Now uh, then I split my flying stuff in two groups, one group here and one group here. So I have one inspiring on each side, the archfiend and the well of souls. Now the way I deploy also, I try to maximize getting cover just in case I don't go first. So like the tortured souls, are trying to get some cover behind the rock and the hill. Yeah. 
So, and the Ashfin is behind the hill. The gargoyles want to stay out of line of sight, hiding behind the rocks. The other gargoyles are staying behind the twisted victims because uh, he has nothing over height 2. So, un uh, unless it's on the hill, he can't see my gargoyles behind any height 2 units. Yep. So, let's move on. I won the roll off, and uh, usually when uh, I'm not sure whether I should go first, I'll usually go first because uh, it's never a bad option to go first and position yourself and you can fix any deployment mistakes. But of course against a shooting army, most of the time you want to go first, if not you'll get a free round of shooting before I even do anything. So going first is good here. So I pretty much just shuffled my things upwards. My, what do you call this, the Archfiend, uh, not the Archfiend, the lower abyssals in the middle state there because you want to get cover from hill, right, 50% behind the hill. Okay. My gargoyles on the left side could decided to just stay back so that it won't get shot at because anywhere else it goes it can might easily be shot at. Even if I hide behind the hill, he could go up on the hill and shoot off the gargoyles. My Archfiend stays uh, behind the hill here yeah, and threaten the army. So for my shooting, my Archfiend did a lightning bolt at the flag it behind, did one damage, while my warlock went onto the hill and zapped. The other flag it with blizzard and got 3 damage in. So the Abyssal Warlock is defense 5 and 12 14, so it doesn't go down that easily. So it's, it's, unless he dedicate a lot of fire into it, it's not so easy to kill it. So in his response, he let's talk about the right side first, okay? My flyers position aggressively, but in return, his three snips all backed up, they have nimble, so they can still shoot as per normal without much penalty. Yeah, the rebel positioned itself in the forest so that I'll get a hindered charge. The breath weapons stationed behind the rebel, but they can't shoot this round because they all have 12 inch range. Okay. So I worked out the math to determine the average number of hits. So these three units of snips to the right side. 14 attacks each divided by 3 because they hit on 5s. So that's a very average of 14 hits and 7 wounds against my tortured souls because they are defense 4. So but in total I think they did 12 here. 10 to the regiment and 2 to this uh twisted victims. Okay, because these breath weapons are out of range, so they can't shoot. And then there's the three rock throwers. So my guess is they are shot at the Well of Souls because uh, they hit on 5 so average 3 of them 1 would hit and with uh, D3 plus 2 blast it's a 5.5 blast on average and that would mean 4 to 5 wounds so it dealt 6 to the Well of Souls so that's all the shooting on the right side so I think it did above average but thankfully my my this uh, regiment did not break because it's a 15 but he wrote Less than, I think he wrote 4 on the second row. Okay, so let's talk about the middle. The middle most likely seems like only this spitters could hit the lava over here. So it averages 3.3 hits, so it should average 1.5 to 2 wounds, so took 2 wounds to the lava. Okay, so let's look more towards the left side. So this spitters also moved up to the obstacle, so that should average 3.3 hits, probably shot towards here, and that one to the to the twisted victim, uh, no, the tortured souls. Now this side is all the way on the left is a little bit scarier. The three characters moved up behind the snips. I think they all shot at the archfiend. Dealt four in total. So if I'm not wrong, hmm. 14 divided 6, so 2 hits on average on the Archfiend that will almost do 1 wound because it wounds on 5. Yeah. And then he'll probably breath next, hitting on 5 and wounding on 5, that's another 1 to 2 damage. Then there's an Alchemist Cursed, which hits on 5s and wounds on 5 as well, so that's also. Oh no, that wounds on 5 or less. Okay. So that should average about 2 damage. And then the breath weapon, uh, sorry, the last one is the blood boil. So that will average about 
uh, 1 damage as well. So it should average about 5 damage, so it just dealt slightly below 5 to 6 damage, so it did below average only at 4 damage. So what was my response? So I took a lot of damage on the right side. Let's go back to the right side where the Twisted Victims, the Regiment of Tortured Souls were, and the Well of Souls. So I think I leached off some health onto the Well of Souls, and then I did a triple charge into the Spitters. Because that was the only thing in range to be charged. I want to charge things so that I can life leech and heal back some, some health, right? So that's what I did on that side. Let's move on to the next picture. Top of two, what did I do? So you can see the units charging in here. My gargoyle just tried to keep up behind my height 2 and height 4 stuff so that it doesn't get shot so easily. But you can see that the sniffs can still come around and get some shots in. Okay, my Archfiend on the left charged the unit behind and my Tortured Souls went for the Spitters on the left because I want to stop the Spitters from shooting, right? And then Basusu also, I think, combined charge into it. Okay, um, the Gargoyles on the left went to hide behind the forest. Now realizing that my Lower Abyssals can't stay put any longer and since I started to engage more of their things, and there are more threats in the in the opponent's face. I'd like to move my this uh, lower abyssals forward. Shooting face. I only had a warlock. He moved up and shot at the sniffs here, dealing four damage. So that is quite lucky of me for the blizzard to do four damage. So let me erase all the markings and let's talk about the combat. So my combat here didn't work out so well, right? Because uh, they are they are all melee four and they hit on fives. In when they're hindered. So that's a total of 9 plus 18, 27, 27, 37 attacks. Hitting on 5, that's only 12 hits. So I should average about 10 wounds. So I took dealt 9 wounds, so that is a pretty close to average, slightly below average, but it's fine. Okay. And I didn't life leech a lot off, so they're still wounded on 7 and 7. And I bounced off, so that's uh bad news for me I guess. Alright, this uh, this two wounds belongs to the lava. So this side I also didn't break it. I think it took seven wounds. This side dealt seven wounds so nothing broke. So that was quite sad for me. Okay so his counter attack will be devastating. So let's look at that. So let's look at the right side first. The three sniffs move out and start shooting. Okay this uh, rebel stood still did not want to counter charge. And this uh, unit also, these three things also breathed. So in total, I lost my Well of Souls, I lost the Regiment of Tortured Souls, and I lost the Gargoyles on the right side. That was really painful. Okay, this, this uh, Spitters here counter charge, and I guess all this put its shooting into the Tortured Souls, but it didn't do much. So I think I was pretty lucky, I only took 3 damage in total, so that must have been. Uh, quite bad rolling on the opponent's side. Okay, so the sniffs here counter charged and dealt one damage to my Archfiend. So in total, on bottom of two, I lost these three units. So it's not that bad. Okay, so let me talk about my reprisal. So I noticed that the three characters on the left they are lined up together. So if I can charge them and overrun, I got the potential of killing all three of them. So I saw that my Basusu at this uh, opportunity to charge them this way right so I'm gonna shift my tortured souls upwards because if I counter charge them my Basusu wouldn't be able to see so I shifted my tortured souls upwards out of the way so that Basusu could charge this first wizard over here and I could overrun into the second the flea back right uh, the sniff the flag it all right and then into the wizard again so that's what I did Let's move on to the next picture to see what happened. So, my Basusu did exactly that. My Tortured Souls moved up 10 and uh, pivoted twice to basically look at the whole rear of their army. You can see this tape measure here also showing that I have the option to charge the catapults, the rock throwers if I want to. Okay, the, the unit of Gargoyles here decided to charge the Spitters so that I could stop them from shooting. So that's uh, 2 damage I dealt to them. Okay, 
So let's talk about here. So my t twisted victims on the right side killed off the rebel, which is pretty lucky because because it's not a counter charge, I would still hit on five, so that would be six hits. Yep, and probably five wounds. So they would have taken fourteen. So I think not too bad. And my abyssal warlock hit the blizzard a second time. So first time dealt 4, second time I don't know how much was dealt, but it was probably a very lucky roll. And I eliminated that unit of uh, Fleabag Rider Sniffs. Yeah, so next, what else do I talk about? My Basusu charged, he killed, and he rolled a 1 for overrun, so it's just stopped there. All right. If I, I just needed a 2 because of the length of the cavalry base, right? I just needed a 2. And I have hit the second unit, and I needed a two. I have hit the third unit, but oh well. Sad times when when I rolled a one. Okay, so now the Archfiend killed off the Fleabag Rider Sniffs over there. So that's pretty much my turn. So his reprisal. Let's rewind so that I can see what happened. All right. So reprisal. This uh, Sniffs managed to kill the gargoyles. The unit of rebels here went to charge the lava, dealing zero damage, right? The, all the shooting here dealt eight damage, to, and here and here. All the shooting on the right side dealt eight damage to the twisted victims. Looks like I took some damage from on the on the low abyssals as well. So, what else happened? So the units here on the left did more shooting into the Archfiend. So the Archfiend has taken 11. Luckily, it's still hanging around. So you can see my Basusu is here. He chose to ignore it. Okay. So my reprisal. My Archfiend managed to charge the Sniffs on the flank, I think. But managed to take out the Sniffs. Basusu decided to kill one more character and is looking at the other one. Okay, the lower abyssals went to flank charge the unit that was here. So let me rewind the picture. Yeah, so it flank charge the unit that was here and killed it off. The tortured souls decided to kill a unit here. I decided not to go for the Rock throwers because that will position me out of the game for dominate. Okay, what else? So this uh, twister victims charged a sniff here, got hindered by the water, but still managed to kill off the unit. So that was pretty lucky on me. This uh, this uh, abyssal warlock probably hit with his blizzard dealt one damage. So it's pretty lucky to have hits pretty much every round. So that's pretty much what happened. Let's move on. Wow. So this three units of breath, I think it's two breath and a hand grenade, and probably a catapult helping as well, took out the twisted victims on the right side. I took a lot of damage to the lower abyssals. It's at twelve. The sniffs charged. The warlock but dealt no damage. Defense 5, right? And the Archfiend finally went down to this uh, final wizard on the side. So my reprisal, I decided Basusu shouldn't chase the unit here. Because if I chase that I can't contribute to combat in the center. So I decided to leave it alone anyway. It takes a while for him to come all the way around. So my Basusu started to come to the center to help out in any combats. In the center, let me rewind and see. So my lower abyssal hot, and I think the tortured souls com combo charge, multi charge this uh, spitters, and took it out. Yep, probably what happened. This uh, uh, arch, uh sorry, warlock moved back, but uh, Blizzard has a minimum range of twelve inch and uh, beyond, so it has nothing to shoot at. So I missed one picture on the bottom of 5, so let's move on. 
So this is the top of 6, so the opponent has moved and I have moved again. So I lost my Lower Abyssal Horde. Yeah, and I did some combat here. Let me see what the IQ. Hmm, not sure what I killed, but I guess I moved into the forest for cover. Yeah, but Susu did a second move to towards towards the forest for cover. Yeah, most likely that's it. So I'm trying to position everything in cover while in the dominate circle, right? You can see the wizard making his way down. And on the bottom of his turn, his breath and probably the catapults and probably the sniffs and the and the flag it here took out the tortured souls. But we rode and it's ended on the bottom of six, and I have a horde of lava. So that is unit strength three, while he only has a regiment of sniffs. That's unit strength two. Okay, they're nimble, but uh, only large infantry and large cavalry gets uh, minus one unit strength for nimble. This uh, warlock is an individual, so it doesn't score. Okay, it's the only individual on the 40 mm base in uh, this uh, second edition. So, if turn 7 was to come along, I would have uh, backed up my lava to the edge of the 12 inch bubble. Or at least half of the 12 inch bubble, as long as I have majority in, right? So, he has this wizard that can shoot at me, the sniffs, uh, the, the flamethrowers were out of range, the trombones were out of range, so he could only move 5 and breath 12. The rock throwers could shoot at me, but he, uh, yeah, healing on fives, and the flag it can probably reach me. But I guess my basusu can stop one of them. So it's taken only two wounds so far, so there's still a good chance that it might survive. So that's the game, right? If I erase everything, you can see that he probably has more things on the board. I only have three things left: lava, warlock, and basusu. Right? He has a wizard. Flag it, sniffs, two trombones, and three rock, rock throwers. So quite a bloody game, but yeah, managed to survive. So it's pretty lucky for me. Takeaways for this game. Wow, melee four when hindered becomes melee five. It is quite inaccurate. There will be lots of misses, and I can't depend. Even with triple charge, I couldn't kill off a kill off a horde of rebel. So that's quite bad. Next, yeah, screen my units against shooting. So even in deployment, you must be very careful that you deploy in a way that uh, if they get to shoot turn one, the their options are limited. So I like to always hide my goggles at the start of the game because it would be pointless if uh, they just shoot at it with a few hits and then the goggles just go down. Goggles are really very fragile. So look for good charge opportunities like what uh, I saw with Basusu. When I shifted the tortured souls out of the way, I could potentially kill all the three unit characters, but uh, unfortunately, I rolled one on the overrun. Okay. So, this is uh, talking about my tortured souls not going for the rock throwers. So, I decided to contribute to kill the scoring units instead of the non scoring ones and uh, stay in the center of the board to threaten the other units. So, that was my focus. So when, uh, yeah, do plan on unit strength because uh, that's what I did when I planned my army list. I wanted the two infantry hordes for the unit strength 6 because otherwise my army has quite little unit strength because of all the flying units uh, and they are large, large infantry so they have one unit strength less. And try to always get cover because like my lava tried to stay in the forest the whole game and my tortured souls at the end also went to the forest hoping to survive but it didn't yep so that's it after this third round i'm going to round four as uh, fifth place in fifth position going into round four so there's uh, two more rounds to go round four and round five so i'll be sharing the next two games as well and i hope you like this battle report if you like this kind of uh, summarized concise tactical battle report do subscribe to my channel and I'll be doing more of these and I'll really appreciate your support. Thank you.